Hooray. Good morning. Thank you for waking up so early to see our talk. Um, we're going to talk about web security, like uh, PHP stuff. And we're French. Um, we're really happy to be there. It's really super great. And uh, we are working in the same company, the three people here. Uh, it's called NBS. It's really a small one in France. And we are hosting a lot of uh, different websites that are doing stuff like selling shoes or things like that. And uh, we are hosting really a lot, awful lot of different PHP applications. And the problem that we're trying to solve is that some of our customers get pwned every day because they are running PHP stuff. So how can we get them to not get pwned on a daily basis? Okay, so currently we already have some uh, level OS hardening with uh, Python JR security, for example. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, custom IDS on the uh, client web server to, to detect uh, attacks. And uh, we also use uh, WAF that we wrote uh, for Nginx that is called uh, Naxi. Um, everything is great, but uh, unfortunately it's not uh, enough to to patch or to protect every uh, website with uh, <coughs> from all vulnerabilities, and uh, also we cannot touch the uh, customer PHP code, and we also don't really want to do it. And so, and uh, before we were talking about uh, Snuffle packets, uh, a few stories about PHP. Uh, so PHP is a great language. Uh, its syntax is based on C, Java, and Perl. Uh, and its goal is to allow anyone to write uh, web pages quickly. Uh. Uh, this one is a citation from Rasmus, the guy that uh, originally created PHP, and uh, as you can see, he is aware about uh, some of the issues that the language holds, so I'm not going to paraphrase him. <coughs> and so, yes, uh, writing a real programming language is a tough job and shouldn't be given to uh, anyone. And when it comes to PHP, there's a lot of things about uh, parsers as well, and that's why it can make sometimes uh, our job difficult. Uh, I don't know if you try to use these things in PHP, but it's quite interesting. Uh, So uh, now on to the um, thing. So how uh, PHP address some kind of uh, vulnerabilities, the thing that you know, it has this uh, online documentation and everybody uh, can comment on the documentation. And for them, sometimes a uh, way to address a vulnerability is just by adding a, a comment saying, don't use this to do that. Uh, but as I said, everybody can comment uh, on the PHP documentation. And so people are just like somehow uh, sharing some cool vulnerabilities all together and some vulnerable uh, implementation of uh, various features. And the thing is that some of the vulnerability we find in the PHP documentation that was written by users as examples, uh, you will find them in real life as well. And you will find them uh, over and over and over and over again. So what about adding PHP itself? There was a great project called Theosin by Stefan Esser. You might have heard about this guy. He's working on iPhone security now, I think. But we are in uh, 2017, and uh, Theosin has some issues like uh, useless feature, and uh, it lacks some useful ones that we really like to have. And it's not really, you can really use it if you've got an awful lot of different websites. And you can't use it on PHP 7, it's the latest version. I think that PHP 5 won't be supported anymore by the end of the year, something like that. 
So yeah, you have to move to PHP 7, but you cannot add on it because Suicine doesn't work. So what can you do? You can reinvent the wheel and write your own PHP extension. And it's called the Snufflepagus because it's fun to pronounce it. Uh, for those who don't know about Snufflepagus, uh, it's a character from Sesame Street, and you can find it on Wikipedia. And it's, it looks like this. It's an elephant like PHP. But why have we filled the slides with Babar? That's because the nice talk uh, called Totally Spies from two years ago, it was about a malware called Babar. So we thought it might be fun to use Babar everywhere in the slides. Um, so the main feature of Snufflepagus is to be able to uh, do PHP level virtual patching. Um, in, uh, with PHP, you've got uh, by default a configuration option called disable function uh, that allows you to uh, completely disable uh, a function. So for example, if I don't want uh, my website to, to be able to call a system, I can just put it in the, config, in the configuration uh, that I, I want to disable the system function. Uh, the major drawback of uh, disable function is that uh, it's global. Uh, you can either forbid totally uh, system or you have to, uh, but if you need uh, the system function in only one file of, of your website, you need to allow it globally. So, uh, with Snufflepagus, you can, uh, like with uh, the uh, disable function in PHP, you can completely disable uh, function call. And you can also uh, allow a function call only in a specific file. So here, we, uh, we just wrote a rule that will allow the uh, function system to be called only in a file that is called up.php, as then we say uh, drop the function call for every other file. And you can also uh, add uh, some filters on the uh, rule. So here we've got an example where you where we specify the hash of the file uh, to be sure if uh, an attacker is able to modify the up.php file, he won't be able to execute his code because if he modifies the file, uh, the hash won't, uh, won't be good anymore. Um, about the syntax, so uh, as you can see, this is not a standard PHP configuration syntax. Uh, we had to design our own uh, syntax because uh, the PHP ini uh, syntax is not nearly flexible enough for uh, what we want to do. Uh, we've got quite a few filters to uh, to apply on function call. Uh, Everything is documented. We've got a lot of example in the documentation. And uh, the syntax was uh, designed with a uh, few goals in mind. We wanted to be able to patch every WordPress uh, vulnerability. Uh, every vulnerability that was released by RIPS uh, last year. And uh, some uh, high profile vulnerability or even our own uh, zero days, but we'll talk about that a bit later. Um, so, and uh, you can also write some uh, pretty complex rules. So for example, here's the first one. Uh, you will drop the uh, call to the function internal func only if uh, internal func was called by the uh, method one uh, method in the my class class that is in the PHP thingy namespace. Um, also, in the configuration, order matters. Uh, so here we also uh, allow the call to the admin cron, admin cron thing uh, function only if the call comes from localhost, and we disable the call for everyone else. Uh, you can also filter on the uh, on variable content. So for example, you can say um, the f disable the render tab call if you see that in uh, underscore request, so all the uh, variables that have been uh, sent to PHP, if you see uh, the tab parameter with a double cut in it. 
and you can also uh, match on the uh, argument posi position. So for example, the first argument, if, the, if it doesn't match uh, an uh, alphabetic string, drop the call. Um, so uh, Sebastian just showed you some examples. So now let's uh, move on to trying to actually fix some vulnerabilities with it. Uh, so as we said, uh, PHP, it has uh, one great aspect that it's quite easy to use and it's quite dangerous because it's too easy to use and it offers some kind of uh, features. So for example, the system uh, function, for those that don't know PHP, it allows you to uh, execute an external program. The documentation actually warns you, says beware, don't give uh, interested user input to this function, else uh, bad things are going to happen. Uh, hopefully, uh, people are not listening at all to what he said, and uh, we just see this uh, kind of things uh, happen pretty often. And uh, overall, there were uh, quite a lot of uh, vulnerabilities related to this. Uh, the thing is that uh, relying on the syntax that was shown previously, we can somehow prevent the exploitation of uh, those vulnerabilities. Uh, simply by denying some uh, specific characters in the argument to the system call. Uh, in this specific case, by uh, denying all the characters that can be used to uh, inject uh, shell comments, uh, we're able to make the vulnerability unexploitable for the, the attacker. Uh, system is one example, and I think it's one of the most famous and classical uh, PHP vulnerabilities. Some are less known and uh, were popularized uh, a bit later. Uh, for example, for mail, the documentation uh, simply says that you can give additional parameter to the mail uh, call, uh, which is then passed to the MTA on the machine. It was uh, mostly uh, popularized by uh, RIPS quite recently. Uh, and so people are just usually letting uh, arbitrary user data get into this parameter, uh, which uh, in turn, depending on uh, which uh, mail uh, client is installed on the machine, uh, allows the attacker to get remote uh, code execution uh, by giving uh, additional flags. Uh, how we can limit the impact is uh, simply by uh, putting uh, some uh, extra filters uh, to this parameter in order to be sure that the user cannot supply uh, optional flags that can lead to remote code execution. Um, however, we know in, uh, from experience that uh, nobody is uh, going to uh, take time to write rules. Uh, so instead we look at how we can simply and purely kill some uh, bug classes. Um, for example, when you're popping an XSS, most of the time you're about to steal the cookies, the session ones. And uh, like Suosin, you are encrypting the cookie server side with uh, the IP address, a uh, secret static key from the server, and an environment variable. Because uh, originally Suosin was using the IP address, but in 2017, people are roaming a lot. Like uh, you're using your mobile device, you are on 3G, and then you're back home on Wi-Fi, and then your cookie is invalid, and you must log on again. It's painful. That's why we provide a way to use environment variable instead, like TLS session or thing like that. So even if you're roaming, you won't get disconnected. And since the cookie is encrypted with your user agent, and a variable tied to the user, even if you manage to steal the cookie from the user, you cannot use it. And the administrator gets an alert in his log. So it's pretty handy, in my opinion. It's completely transparent. Um, speaking about cookies, if the user is coming with HTTPS on your website, the cookie automatically gets the flag, uh, the secure flag, saying that the cookie can only be transmitted over HTTPS. And if the cookie are encrypted, the flag uh, HTTP only is set because it's encrypted, so there is no point in using it in JavaScript, since you, it will just be garbage. Uh, so file upload, um, th what the documentation is saying, uh, pretty much nothing uh, for PHP. If someone can arbitrarily upload file to your web server, it's only uh, you. You can only 
maybe leak sensitive, sensitive information, not execute code or anything. But um, so what people are doing, taking a, uh, taking user file and uh, just putting them in the document root and letting uh, let you execute them. Uh, I, I'm not sure if there is a single uh, PHP application that allows uh, the user to upload files that wasn't vulnerable uh, to a file upload at, at some point. And uh, how we're killing it, uh, we, this is a feature that we take every inspiration from Ciozine. Uh When a file is uploaded, you can specify a, a script to be called. The, the script will take in parameters the, the file. And uh, then you can analyze it to, to allow or deny the upload. Uh, what we like to do is to use uh, VLD. It's a PHP module that allows you to take a PHP file and uh, disassemble it, and you will get all the PHP opcode of the file. So if the uh, file contains valid PHP, you will get a lot of opcode, of, of code, and you know you can drop the upload because the file most likely contains uh, valid PHP. Uh, answer lies. Uh, the documentation is warning to not pass uh, untrusted user input in answer lies or you can get uh, code execution. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, nobody cares about that. And uh, people love to use a serialized PHP object uh, in, instead of a JSON or stuff like this to, to serialize data, data on the client side. Uh, again, a lot of uh, PHP applications vulnerable to this. And uh, to kill it, we are abusing the uh, PHP uh, serialized format parser um, because if you put uh, anything that is not uh, valid serialized data at the end of the PHP object, uh, the parser will, will just discard it. So we, we calculate um, the HMAC of the uh, serialized object. We append it to the, um, to the serialized string. And when uh, unserialize is uh, is called, we just recompute re the HMAC, validate it, and if the uh, if it doesn't match, we just drop the call. So, <coughs> uh, once again, the documentation warned developers about the possible use and limits of uh, rent. Uh, and again, as it seems to be quite a trend, people are obviously ignoring this, and uh, using RAND for things like uh, reset token, 2F authentications, etc. Uh, and thus, we are getting so uh, quite some public vulnerabilities, but uh, most importantly, it's uh, there's a lot of vulnerabilities in smaller applications, I get that don't get any uh, publicity, and where weak usage of RAND can be uh, abused by attackers to bypass authentication or things like this. Uh, how we are killing it, it's uh, simply and purely just uh, replacing RAND by its uh, more secure friends that is already present. So somehow just uh, helping the hand of the PHP developer to do what the documentation says. Uh, then the XML external entities. So for once, the documentation didn't say anything. Uh, luckily, people wouldn't have read it anyway, so they keep giving user uh, untrusted input to the engine, and then we are getting uh, various um, XXE vulnerabilities. Uh, once again, how we can uh, simply kill these vulnerabilities uh, by uh, disabling the dangerous feature uh, uh, at the startup of the XML engine and then looping the call to future occurrence in case the developer actually plan to do things the uh, right way. Uh, so with uh, both virtual patching and some uh, family uh, of vulnerabilities that are purely and simply killed, we uh, can advance a bit further into securing the PHP application that were, that were hosting for our customers. And that's the funny part of the talk. Uh, because it's not a sales pitch, we're going to show you actually uh, some demos. Uh, so yesterday, 
we were at the lobby and we had the idea of auditing some stuff to burn vulnerabilities, but then we get wasted, so we're going to burn some old ones. Are people familiar with this software like LibreNMS? Someone is using it in production? Good for you then. Uh, it's a monitoring software. It's uh, a lot of PHP and provides fancy graph. So you've got a lot of metrology. It's really great. Uh, about disclosure, two are reliable all day, so please do not burn them. Uh, in the install.php file, there is an authentication bypass, like you can set anything in session by sending post data. Uh, you just have to emit a curl request and congratulations, your administrator on LibreNMS. And you can patch it this way by uh, checking that in the post variable there is no fancy stuff, you just drop the call. There is also a remote code execution because uh, using system, because why not? So a single curl request and that's it, you've got a shell. And you virtual patch it the usual way by blacklisting some character or whitelisting stuff into the system call. So yeah, our product is working. Um, speaking of cool stuff, we've got uh, like uh, the schmod hardening, like if someone is trying to do a schmod 777, you can just drop the call. Uh, you can also prevent execution from PHP file that are actually writable, so you can just make your website completely read-only, and if someone managed to upload a file, it, like, it will likely be readable, and so you can deny the execution. Uh, we've got also some really super ghetto SQLi hardening stuff, like if you're trying to smuggle some comments into a SQL request, odds are that it might be an injection. And uh, we're also collecting stuff, because if you've got line like this, you can say, oh, by the way, I'd like you to drop every single request that is hitting this point if it matches this request. So you can get three O days just by running your software. Uh, about performance impact, uh, it's deployed on some pretty big websites, and we are using it for a customer. And uh, so far, we didn't notice any slowdown at all, like literally, because the slowdown depends on how many rules you have, and as long as you don't have like, I don't know, three million rules, you shouldn't notice a single difference. We still got stuff to do, like fixing bugs, and uh, finding new bugs to fix them, and we still have bug classes to kill, like cross-site CSRF, sloppy comparison in PHP, because PHP try to be smart, like if you are comparing two strings, PHP will try to cast them into integer before comparing them, because why not, it's pretty handy. And we have some plan to completely kill SQLite at some point, and then the release party, of course. And uh, it's still not a pitch sale, so this is completely free software under LGPL. You can get it on GitHub, and I wrote a shitload of documentation about it, like how to write rules, the threat model, things like that. Uh, we've got also a lot of unit tests. I think the coverage is close to 100 persons, something like that. And if you've got question of suggestion, we are super friendly, so come drink with us. And that's what you get at the end. And we have like five minutes, something like that. Time for some fun. Uh, since we're speaking about PHP, did you know that PHP is supporting emoji? Well, actually, it doesn't. But this code is valid, because it doesn't recognize emojis like just using super large UTF-8 characters. And uh, that's my favorite slide, because PHP is using ZenVal internally. It's like a generic structure for its variable. And now it's moving to ZenString. And you've got a lot, a really awful lot of different macros to interact with them. And their name is always changing super slightly. So it's Super great to develop in PHP and super great to de to debug your code when you have to deal with Z underscore something or Z str val, Z val, Z str. It's amazing. And uh, we published it, uh, I think, one month ago or two weeks. I don't, I don't remember. And someone posted it on Reddit. And on the top, you've got uh, someone on uh, dash r slash PHP and at the bottom slash r slash netsec. So it's 
pretty fun because on the top people are bitching about it and at the bottom people say that's a pretty good idea. Uh, the slide deck is full of code, so this is the last one. And uh, we like to thank a lot of people like the RIPS people that are writing a PHP scanner that is really working. Uh, Section Heinz that wrote Suicide, in, so we stole, borrow a lot of their ideas. And then PHP project with a lot of exploits that we'd like to kill. And the uh, WebSec for keeping our vulnerability alive, it's a challenge website. And we've got a lot of friends that tested the software and a lot of people called us names for writing stuff and killing bugs. And we're on time. Thank you very much. If you have questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Hey, thank you. So, questions. Over there, over there, over there. Hi. Uh, looks like a great, uh, great tool uh, to use, uh, security-wise. Um, so this is a module. Yes, it's a yeah. module. You just have to slap it on your setup, and it works. So it's written in C. Yes. Yes. Um, so if you disable a system call, for example, so, so the system function, um, would it be possible to re-enable this from PHP? No, because we are hooking the system function in PHP. So there's no way from PHP code to re-enable that? No, you have to get some memory corruption. Right. OK. Thanks. Thanks. More questions? No? OK, well, we'll have more time for coffee. Thanks, guys.